Welcome to the Motorhome and Caravan Show with your hosts, Jay Malpass and Jason, the Motorhome Man Reynolds. First of all, it couldn't be your fault when his life and mine will fall. It will always be my car Trying to throw this shade on me Like they all hate on me Don't bring that rage on me Why they throwing shade on me Like they ashamed on me I thought what age are we? Uh -huh. It's warm outside And we all want shine let you know about it in the city Cause stay in the crib this time Whoa Got pics on the way like a vacay Shoot photo with the AK Got friends by my side Trying to have a great day And I want it while they throw shades Yeah But it's all on me Let them roam free Like a European Yeah See me pick up the phone Like I'm trying to haul a home Starting to act like E.T. Yeah Rock them shades Now they can't see me Trying to run away But I'm not speedy Need no fake, I just want what's real And I ride that way till I'm free, yeah Trying to throw yeah. this shade on me Like they all hate on me Don't bring that rage on me No rage Good evening Good evening, how is one? You've been playing with the start again, haven't you? I've always played with the start I'll just play with the start again next time as well Okay, okay, so good evening To the Motor and Caravan Show Yeah um, is that official now? I think so, mate. It's going to be. Facebook so, official. yeah, we're going to um, talk about two birth motorhomes tonight, are we? We are, yes. Yeah. Got... Do you want to get Mark up? We can. You want to get Mark up already? Yeah. Bloody hell. All right, then. Oh, what... what are you talking about tonight? I don't know. Caravans. Two birth yeah. caravans. Okay. You got a couple Same of two births for us? Uh, yeah, something a bit different. Okay. Oh, I like these. I like these. Anything else? Uh, oh, Kosoa storage. So if you want to store your caravans or motorhomes or boats or cars, yeah, so Kosoa storage. So uh, hopefully some useful information. Okay. Um, cut it a bit fine. John? You want to bring Johnny? Please. Okay. See <laughs> if he realises he's on yet. Where are you, John? <laughs> Phew, that was close. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm away in my caravan. Where How about cool is this? It works as well. <laughs> uh, we caravan? are in North Devon at... Yeah, I'm, I'm away in my caravan in North Devon in uh, Ilfacombe Caravan and Motorhome Club site. I have been since Thursday last week. Oh, no, uh, sorry, Tuesday. Tuesday even. God. So we're going to have a little review of the caravan site, then, are we? Uh, yeah, so um, I've already done a, a pre-recorded mm. video when we first got here, just in case this didn't work. <laughs> but it's working, so mm. happy days. Is I, I was a little bit late to the party because we've just finished tea. <laughs> well, I won't worry, I, 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 was, I wasn't that far in front. <laughs> How are we all? We all had a good week. Mm. Mm. Nice, yeah. yeah. It was a long yeah. one last week, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. wasn't it? Cool. So we're going to try a bit of a different format tonight, aren't we? Uh, stick to a bit of a schedule, have an early night. Uh, we, me and Shane are going to talk about two birth motorhomes. Uh, Mark's going to talk about caravans. Uh, we're going to talk about storage. And then John's going to tell us a little bit about uh, the campsite he's at. And we might have a little tip as well, might we? I yeah, just want to know, John, how's your picture better than mine and you're at a campsite? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why, because I have got my Netgear uh, Wi-Fi Ooh. router. Look at that bad boy. So it's, uh, yeah, it's it's, de it's a dedicated device for while you're away. And um, so what I've done is I've put my um, SIM card. So I've got a Sky Mobile with um, data for the whole family. So what I've done is I've put my uh, phone SIM card in here. 
and we've got 4G and yeah, five bars. So happy days. Got I that. think I need to get one of them. It's a fast high speed router. Oh, mate, it's, it's ideal for being away. Um, well, I, di I did a little review on it, um, but we hadn't used it. And I've been using it now for almost a year while we're away. And actually, it's really, really good. Everybody can connect to it. We got um, like Now TV, like a little Now TV fire stick that goes in the TV. So we've got Sky Movies, got internet. And as you can see, my connection while in a field is pretty good. <laughs> Better than mine. Just to quickie there, Paul Joyce has just said, nerves are in tatters after the last couple of laps of the Formula One. Did any of you lot watch it? I didn't get to see it. Yeah. No, oh, we've been out. We've been out really? all day. Oh, Lewis was so clever. His wheels, his wheels were God. They were God. <laughs> and he just managed really? to get around. Yeah, it was really good. Really good. So, right, <laughs> Jim, so look at Mr. Well, Mr. Trudgeon has said, uh, looks like John has forgotten to sun cream. Have I got a bit of a tan going? <laughs> have, you, have you have you got a shirt? Have you got a shirt on, John, or is that? It's, it's just his tan. Is it, it's his I tan. Don't know where, I don't know where I don't know where your face ends and your body starts. <laughs> <laughs> you like a little orange. Yeah, well, that's all right. It's the, the weather, mate. Honestly, the weather's been good. The weather's been hot. It's been on and off. Been There's been some some sort of uh, sort of showery rain. Um, but even on a, we went to a cycle ride on the National Cycle Trail, um, part of the Tarka Trail today, and we we rode all the way down to Ilfacombe and back up. So yeah, it was lovely. Good, happy yeah. days. Sorry, right. <laughs> Clear off. We'll see you both later. All right, see you in a bit. <laughs> see you in a bit. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> right, and if you want to ask any questions, you want to be on the show, well, uh, you can follow me on Twitter. On Caravans and Campers at SY45RP, also on Instagram at the Motro Man, and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, the Motro Man. And Shane? Yep, and me at We Buy New Motor Caravan. Okay. Simple as that. So, you said to me last week we want to do two John sponsored by St. Trapez. <laughs> Um, you said to me last week we're going to do two birth boat robes. Go find a two yeah. birth boat robe and do a little review. So, are you going to show my little review? I shall certainly do. Okay. Are you ready? All right. So, let's have a look at a two birth boat robe. And what I've picked here for you is an auto sleeper Broadway. Uh, it's on a 2012. It's a tad over six meters and it's weighing at three and a half thousand kilograms. So, a normal license. So we've got an electric step and we'll come inside and have a look. What I like about the Broadway, love the finishing on them. Um, the Auto Sleeper are renowned for a good finish and a good quality build basically so you've got plenty of storage. But what you've also got along here is the big bench seats as well which are ideal for just having as a single bed and again you can move them out to make a big double bed and everything slots down. And then we're on a Peugeot boxer chassis. Uh, it's a six speed. And then you've got the media pack on there with it and also with air conditioning. Um, good sunlight up above as well. And then this has the combi boiler, so it's got gas and electric hot water with a blown air system. And I really like the worktops here as well we have the fridge and the microwave fitted in and then a three burner hob with a hot plate grill and oven and um, good prep area here and then followed by inside we have the shower and toilet and the thing here we can turn this around here to make a separate shower as well so for just over two over six meters this is a good van, a good two berth, good quality build by Auto Sleeper. And to be honest, the long bend seats, I can't really knock the van, to be honest with you. How's that? Yeah, one bad. You like that, don't you? Hmm, I do. The Auto Sleepers are mainly predominant two berths, aren't they, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Across the board, yeah. even now. There's not many four berths around. Yeah, at 6.28 metres um, on a Peugeot. That one's only done 18,000 miles, mate. Um, and it's a two, 2012. 
Okay, so that's not bad. Uh, bad mileage per year. No, no. But they are, so they are not... very well. They are very well uh, made. The the auto levers, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They're just very solid. Yeah, yeah. It was like the work tops. What I really liked about them as well. Yeah. Um, nice. It's a um, nice two berth van that is, mate. It's been well looked after as well. So that how many miles was that? It's done eighteen thousand miles. Okay, that's not bad. That's it. For what eight year old van. So an adequate look, and you're expecting to pay anywhere between the 35s and 40s for that, mate. Okay, and obviously, and the the broad. I'm right in thinking the broadway has got the longer, longer bench seats than the. That's it. Yeah. What's it called? The way though. Yeah, yeah, it's longer, so you can actually have two single beds there, mate, as well. And they're about they're about six foot singles, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So Very that's good. Nice. Yeah, nice little van. Yeah. <laughs> We're only through with it tonight, aren't we? I know, I just heard that pencil go across the, the paper. <laughs> right, Mark, let's have a look at your two birds. What have you got, mate? I've got um, a little Airstream. So this is, this is oh, I've, I, I love the Airstream. Absolutely love the bigger caravans. Um, and can you remember a few years ago, we saw one of these at the auction. It was probably 2008, 2009. And I was desperate to buy it, and you it were, just went you? silly money. Yeah, it just went silly, silly money. Um, so this is the pinnacle of adventure. If you want to get out, <laughs> the pinnacle of adventure. <laughs> yeah, oh. you know, like this. This is adventure on wheels. Then you it's cannot like, get. It's like you're living in a about beads. No, no, no. Oh. If you want to go off wild camping. And this is if you're if you're younger and you've got no commitments, or if you're older and you've got to that point where you go, I tell you what, we've we've retired. We want to get out and about. We don't want to be tied down anywhere. We just want to go off. We don't want anything massive. This is what you need. And you're not going to see many in the UK. I think is there two in the UK um, currently? So what's, what's special about this? Is this like a tardy? So inside is it like a double bed? Fridge freezer. Yeah, so you've got a, a seating area uh, which is sort of at the back of the caravan. Um, so that makes into a, a double bed at the back uh, or two long bench seats. And then the kitchen area is right up the up the very front. Uh, but you've got in the kitchen, you've still got sink, hob, fridge, microwave. You've got combi boiler heating system for your hot water and your heating. You've Can still got. Show? There is, yes. I'm waiting for him to go that's through that. That's the layout. Yeah. So yeah, so that's your double bed at the at the rear. Uh, now the old base camp it used to fold up with the seats, so you could get quite a lot more in there. But on the newer ones, they've sort of gone. Well, actually, you can put a load of weight on the roof, um, and you can still get quite a lot in because at the very back there's a little door. There we go. So there's that little door, so you can still get bikes in there, uh, canoes, any anything that you want really, and it is. Like I say, it, it's the pinnacle of adventure. This is what, if you want to just go off um, wild camping, I don't I don't think there's much better than, than this. Um, and it's still got toilet, cassette toilet in there, shower. It's got an external shower. You've got your wash and basin. Uh, you can put a big awning on there as well to double your space. And the American ones, they have annexes in there as well. So you can you can have family come along with you, but it's how how good would that be going off on your holidays, getting into Scotland? To... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Shay, just 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 not the picture, not the picture, not, of. not the picture. Just bring John in. Don't ask John. He's got kids. <laughs> he ain't by two births. It's like your pinnacle of adventure. He's got kids. Yes, it is. Of course, it is. Come on, John. <laughs> That yeah. if, if you have got, got kids, yeah, I think, exactly, yeah. I bet if if you're a couple or a single and you want to get out and adventure, small, compact, you can you can tow it with something small like somebody's put in there. You could probably wow. tow it with a motorbike. Wow. Actually, uh, that it's quite an heavy one. The airstream, it's sixteen hundred <laughs> kilograms maximum. So it's How a much? yeah, <laughs> sixteen hundred <laughs> kilograms, yeah. So let's, let's, let's just, you need a big pickup or a big four by four, a big estate car. So yeah, you did say that on his <laughs> slick sales pitch, did you? 
Oh. Well, you've already bought it at this point, and you just get over the fact of that it's sixteen hundred kilograms. Much was it? How uh, much is it? Well, it's 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 well, just under right, forty thousand dollars. Right, John. I've actually found a two thousand eight one on Auto Trader. Have a guess how much it is. A two thousand eight. Twelve years old. On Auto Trader at this moment, how much do you think? And, and new ones are forty thousand dollars. Yeah, which is about thirty thousand pounds. But then, if you import yes. it into the UK, you've got VAT, all your import costs. So you, you're so into forty that, grand by the time you get it here. It's a lot of dollar, isn't it? So for something so, much, so small. <laughs> yeah, but if you, if you but, weigh it in, John. Yeah. You can weigh it in if if we're. <laughs> you don't weigh it. In. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at, uh, Jace, it's probably what we're looking at. It's got uh, it's got to be 10, 15 grand. Come on, John, get it real. Oh, Brad, Come on, he's John. One, he's, he's one on hey, the you're the trade. expert. There's one on the auto trade in our 2008 on for 28,500 quid. Oh, that's a lot of dollar, Crazy. isn't it? Crazy money. But, well, it's but the look at what you can change. Look at... But that, that's the thing. You look at the pictures and you can see the detailing, the quality is there. And you are, again, like what we spoke about, like, not last week, the week before, you are getting what you're paying for, aren't you? There's, well, a, there's a lot of, yeah. well. It's a bit, bit basic, to be fair. <laughs> 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 the, newer ones, the newer ones are probably better value for money. The older ones, they, they were a bit basic, to be fair. Yeah. They weren't. You haven't even got a toilet. It was a portal. Yeah, you're not, uh, Mark, you're not really selling it, this idea of an adventure I'm, to I'm, me. <laughs> I'm selling the new one. But if, hey, if you're on a, if you're on an adventure, wear the bears, go to the toilet. Yeah. I've not, seen something. Not in the you can, you can like strap bikes in there. You can put, uh, yeah. you can put bike, uh, uh, push bikes and stuff in there. Is that you the can same? They got like tie them. downs and stuff. Yeah. The, the older ones, yeah, you can cool. put motorbikes in. So, it, I don't know. I, I just think they're really cool. I think they're sort of – I thought of it, it was a marketing ploy. If you've got that on the pitch, on the sales pitch, everyone's going to look at it and go, wow, how much is that? That's crazy. Mm. So it makes all the other bands look cheap. It's, it, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although – Although, although Mr. Trudgeon has put Airstream quality, uh, have you ever been on, in one, John? I have, well, I have been John, John, in a network. Well, this this, this they, 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 in fact, they don't, let, they don't actually let me look in. I look in and they go, no, no, you're not coming in here. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> John, what we'll do, it will take everything out of your caravan. Mm. We'll take all the decals out, sand it down so it's shiny, yeah. and we'll call it an Airstream. Yeah. Uh, uh -uh. Bailey Airstream. <laughs> Next week's adventure. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. You can put bikes in a four. Well, to be fair, we've come down here with four bikes on our Volvo. So, yeah. So, you've shown us an Airstream. What's your next inspiration to go out caravanning? So, so let's 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 rein it back in a little bit and let's go a little bit more sensible. So, the UK version, which is just a Swift base camp basically. Now, this is it. Ooh, Again, very, very similar. And uh, some somebody actually bought this for me. Yeah, someone got soaked should... in wet. Yeah, sorry. So uh, we've, we've mentioned the caravan auction before, and we don't buy a lot from auction normally. But this came up. We knew what the history of it was, why it was in there. Uh, and I was on holiday, and Jason kindly uh, bought a caravan for me. And this is this is what we ended up with, or similar to this. Um, so very similar to the the American one. This one again, the front seats fold up, so again you can get all the bikes in there. Um, that makes into a big double bed also. The back cushion, back rest space that just go into the middle. The the bottoms of the, the seats pull into the center. And that's, that bed is huge, absolutely huge. It was six and a half foot um, by about 6.4 wide. So a massive, massive bed. But again, the fold up so you could get loads and loads of storage 
in their bikes, etc. If you can't fit them into the back of the transit van, uh, but you have got a proper proper kitchen area and there's a little pop up socket as well, USB points, um, all the little storage units just above, and there is a proper a proper shower room which I don't think we've got a picture of, um, but there is a proper proper nice little shower unit, um, and that's that's the layout there. What's but the again? Way? Um, these were a thousand and twenty seven kilos maximum, but you'd only got a hundred and eleven kilograms payload, so not the biggest payload in the world, to be fair. Um, I remember Mark seeing these at the show, <clears throat> and they actually blew me over. You put that awning on the back, and it's huge, yes, yeah. Mate. There you go, massive, yeah. Yeah, get get getting that awning on is a different story. I, I had to get a I had to get a step ladder seriously a proper six foot step ladder to be able to put that awning on unless unless you're eight foot three and got a big three foot step you, that that's awning is a nightmare to put on um, so I don't know how older people that are not so keen on getting up a six foot ladder are going to cope putting that awning up but once it's up. Um, it, it was huge. It doubled your space. Do you know and it what? all air. Do you know what? I think they've done a great job of copying that airstream, you know, haven't they? Well, it was it was based. I on don't that, mean yeah. back. Um, yeah, I mean basing it on it, not copying it. Yeah, it yeah. No, it was it was it was based on that because Swift have now become part of Airstream, so you can buy Airstreams in the UK, and that's that's where that evolved from. Um, and they are so popular. We we've had a couple of those, and literally they come in and just they're gone straight away. And even now, we still get emails and phone calls going. Can you get us one? We, that is what we're after. Um, I think it's that thing that you can just get it onto the back. It's not huge, and off you go. Um, if you, if you're an older couple or a younger couple that just want to go touring around Europe or they've opened all another around market the UK, there, mate, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, and again, I think when when you're looking at a two berth, you're looking at something that you you just want to get away in, don't you? you? Don't anything massive and heavy, and you just you just want to go off touring. So, yeah, what type of dough are you paying for a new one? Um, on the new, I've got a feeling there are just over twenty. It depends what offers offers are about, but you can't actually get one at the minute. Um, that was a 2018 and that was 15 grand and they've probably actually gone up a little bit since then to be fair you'd, you'd probably be hard pushed to buy one for 15 grand now right at this very moment in time just just because of the way things are the surprising good them, sellers, aren't sorry they? sorry they're surprisingly good sellers aren't they yeah yeah i thought yeah, they, they were they... a bit gimmick i thought they were a bit gimmicky at first but they do sell well and the amount of times i've been asked on dealers do you know anybody who's got the swift base camps we just need more yeah. over the years. They do they do a four birth version as well, which isn't a lot bigger. I know we're doing two births, but I thought I'd just mention that, sorry. They do look smart. I'll give them that. And um I think Bailey do a similar one, don't they? They're the 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 the, 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 the manufacturers have started to jump on this. Let's get out to the uh, on the uh, the single market, the couples market, looking for adventure, getting new people in um, that hadn't perhaps thought of having a caravan. So yeah, but you saying the audience is hard work, mate. Oh, very. Yeah, is it? I, I literally seriously had to get a, a proper ladder to be able to put that on. I know I'm not the tallest, but I'm not I'm not three foot tall, so. You're not it was, well, <laughs> but yeah, seriously, I had to get a six foot ladder out to put that warning on. <laughs> I did. All right, we'll see you two a bit later then. Okay, yeah. see you in a bit. See you in a bit. Bye. Bye. Any news docking about, mate? There is a bit of news, isn't there? I we'll know, go through this the day because it's been quite difficult over the last few weeks. I'm just going to grab Mark in for this first little bit. Okay. Mark, oh, don't was you was you <laughs> no? Was you aware that Swift still hadn't? Sorry, only started production again yesterday. Uh, yeah, and I don't, I don't know whether they're just now producing for two thousand and twenty-one. Probably so. Yeah, 
don't think they're making anything else now for this year. It's all 2021 yeah, production yeah. now. So, can I just get this right? One of the biggest dealers in the country, I've only yep. just gone back to work yesterday. And they've made five percent and they made five percent of the workforce redundant. Where the biggest boom on at the moment is with motor home and caravans. The new the new hasn't been selling as well as the as the used market. And it's under fifteen and it's on the caravan side and it's flying away. I don't think the new has been as as great. Uh, which was why why we brought up about the part exchanges because of the you can get great deals if you've got a slightly older van and great deals on new, um, but it's it has it's been hard work I think for the newer the newer side. What's your thoughts, Ashley? I just it doesn't make sense to me because we're running everybody's running out of stock and they need to get some stock on the market long term. You know, I just don't see how... Because they, they must be way behind, so there's going to be so many units missing for this year. There's loads, yeah. Well, there must, be must... Units, there must be units, though, where people have already ordered for. Yeah, so yeah. Any, any orders that had been placed are being fulfilled, uh, I believe. Um, but they'd literally only got orders up until about March, and that, that was the problem. Um, they would they'd sort of dragged out the the production so that anybody that had ordered pre it, it was literally already being built and it had been dedicated for uh, the, just the demand hadn't been there unfortunately um when's this from from uh, the previous year mate well yeah the start of obviously um september this this year september now 2021s will be launched Man, oh, the dealers will have their own um, launch of the new products and then they'd normally do the NEC um, and then we'd normally have different shows in between time but um, and then obviously the NEC in February but the, the, just just the numbers of new sales haven't been there just hasn't hasn't been sort of brought to market really people I think have lost lost faith in the new maybe i don't know i don't i don't know why it is uh, and obviously brexit hadn't helped do you think the man no. man the manufacturers are just going to strike 2020 make them 2021s yeah i don't be... think they'll be i don't think yeah, they're going to push out on big new designs no i think somebody said to me um a guy called john available today he said that you i think you'll see you see a lot of the same caravans and motorhomes but with slightly different upholstery yeah and, it, and yeah. even some some of the upholstery will be in different models uh, from what yeah. I believe, yeah. Because, again, if they'd ordered an amount of upholstery, they've, they've ordered it and that's it. So I think you're going to see some of the upholstery from other vans in different models now. They've also, did you say less of a workforce as well? 5%. Cut. I don't get it, mate. I don't get it. Is, he, is, this, is this jumping on the government here? I don't get it. I really don't understand how you can be having, I mean, not necessarily them, but I just, I just keep seeing it with different dealers and car dealers and motor home dealers who are selling more than they've ever done full stop. And all of a sudden they're making mass redundancies. Yeah. It doesn't seem to comp compute in my head. No, no. <laughs> doesn't make sense, does it? No. Nope. Anyway. Moving on. Worthy. Does it make you wonder if Worthy in trouble before this all happened? Well, yeah, they were all panicking before at the shows. Was it, if you, if you spoke, that's the amazing thing. If you spoke to them before COVID... Are we talking Swift or, last or year, everybody? Just, just everybody. Everybody, everybody, was yeah. right. everybody was panicking. Everybody was panicking. And then COVID hit and all of a sudden it's come back again with a boom. There's a gap there for a manufacturer, though, isn't there? Now, something else to think about, though. Have the paused the restart because of materials? Possibly. Not being able to get them. Just expand on that, mate. Yeah, okay. So if they can't get the parts and materials to make the vans, it might not have been worth restarting and getting all the staff off further of again. Because as we know, that is a bit of a problem at the moment, isn't it? 
I think I think they've got stocks of so much, and definitely from Bailey parts. I know that we've been able to get parts a bit easier now than what it was. Um, but I know certain parts I'd, I'd been taking longer. But I, I believe that they're they're sort of back in in line with how they should have been now. Um, All of the manufacturers back in, Mark. Yeah, uh, Luna's the. I'm not going to mention Luna. Uh, Luna's the only <laughs> one that I don't I don't fully know um, about. To be fair, because I heard that during lockdown some of their staff didn't get paid. How true that was, um, and I've I've not really looked it, just not had a chance to really delve into it um, and find out. But um, mm, in, interesting, and uh, I, I don't know what's going to happen without the NEC now. Can we do a bit of digging on this for next week, Mark? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I expect you've just you just showed us that Swift Base Camp, haven't you? Yeah. They should be throwing them up left, right, and so Yeah, they should. Yeah. 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 I don't, I like it, like we just said a minute ago, whether they're just waiting for the 21 models, because obviously you've got all these people that are new to the market buying vans, and they might, after a year, think, oh, I, could, I want something. No, I've tested it. I want something better. Or is that a bit too forward-thinking for them? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's difficult, isn't it? It's... It's difficult to look at it through their eyes. Uh, again, if you're already in trouble, the last thing that you want to do is go guns blazing, jump in, and then find out actually the, the market's not like what we thought it was. Um, so I, I can see from their point of view that they've gone, hang on a minute, let's just sit back a minute and let's just let the, the waves settle. Let's see what happens and then let maybe, are oh, we better just going let's produce everything for 2021 and see what happens let's let's rein it all back in a little bit see how 2021 goes and then we'll go back as we that, should be i think that's not a bad shout mark because i think uh, nobody knows how it's going at the moment and i think possibly no. what swift are doing is just pushing 2020 under the carpet and let's start again at 21 because like yeah. you say there's no show um I, 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 I still don't know where these extra sales are going to come from. Um, that, like, but there again, last last no last NEC, the, the numbers weren't great anyway. So does it does it really make a difference? I don't know. Um, it's a difficult one. In the calendar right now, who would be on summer shutdown? Bailey would be, Swift would be. Usually next week, be hundred percent on next year's market. Back in, so Swift yeah. doing the right thing. And I'm sure, I'm sure. I can't remember the the uh, the manufacturer now, but I believe there are a few that are on shutdown. So they come back to work after having yeah. a couple of months off, and now they've gone just gone straight. Yeah, doesn't make sense, right. does it? No, no, no. doesn't make sense. This is another topic for another time. Yep. You've got something to interesting to talk about with uh, new sales, Shane. Have I? What was that? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Thank sorry. You. <laughs> I, I didn't think about the part of the news. So I went into a dealer the other day that does some very nice uh, high-end motorhomes. Um, Cathargos, Morellos, th uh, things like that. The company called Premium Motor Homes. They have some great, lovely, I mean, the Morellos, they're two, three, four, five hundred thousand pounds. But then they also do the Naus and Cathargos, which are obviously quite expensive as well. They said that the new people onto the market are different to what they have been previously when they're buying motor homes. So, like, we all know what a traditional caravan and motor home are, motor home are. But this younger generation that want the big garage at the back for the kayaks, for the bikes and everything like that, they also want the full gadgets in the motorhome as well. They said they've never been asked so, but well, they haven't been asked this many times over the years for how good is the sound system in the van. How many times have you been asked that, Mark? Never. Yeah. All Sounds these, like all there's these... some parties going on. 
Yeah, all these newbies that, that are coming onto the market, they want all the big sound systems so they can go walking the dog or go kayaking, go mountain biking, come back and then watch the TV with a nice sound system. And they also want the gadgets on the driving side of things as well. So they want the driver assist pack so it drives itself and line uh, and lane um, departure lane systems system. and everything like that. Yeah. I just found that dead interesting. Yeah, no, it says, makes sense, doesn't it? It says a lot of things there, though. A younger market are coming into the industry because they're watching the news, they're seeing what's happening, they're understanding what's happening, um, and they want the features that they get on the, on the cars as well. Yeah. And, you know, when you look at a motorhome, how many people think, uh, uh, which one of you takes uh, attention to the spec of the, the cab itself? As long as it's got... Yeah. Aircon and probably cruise. That's the two main, isn't it, really? Mm. Hmm. Talking so, about yeah. motor homes, are you going to give me your two bits? We've just got two more that I'm just going to introduce. We're just still on okay. the news. Okay. One minute. Okay. Okay. So they've started bringing out the 21 models, if you remember. And that this is my. 2020. No, these are 21. Sure? It's the brand, brand, brand new models. <laughs> See, I, I just wanted to bring this photo because I love this photo. Wave through the window. <laughs> I can't get my hand in that one. <laughs> so the Hobby Siesta that's been around for years has been replaced by the Optima on tour. Three layouts all on the Citroen chassis, which you don't see very often. The one we looked at had bugs in the back, didn't it? I don't know. It wasn't around then. Oh, so we did the Optima. I know yeah. we did yeah, that was a different one. This is the Optima on tour. Okay. Because they also do an Optima Deluxe and so on. See, knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Then the next one is Rapido have bought out their C series, which is the compact series for 21. Oh, it says 21 on the front and everything. Look, it's definitely a 21. That's the nice. Size. That's a nice yeah. one. And look how slim it looks. Hmm. It doesn't really go much wider after the cab. It looks and more they, like a uh, a van, doesn't it? That you know, your normal commercial van. It, it doesn't look huge and sticky out like a normal motor. You like a, a good technical term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so most, um, so most, obviously, motor homes, as we know, are two point two, two point three meters, maybe two point four if you go to the Baileys in width. But they're sticking at two point one seven meters wide. Will it be a better of that garage shape? I'd have thought so, yeah. Yeah, it's got to be, hasn't it? Yeah. It's got to be. It's got to be. Okay, then. Now we can go on to the next two berth. Right, let's have a look at your two berth, then. I've shown you mine. Let me see yours. Yeah. <laughs> Who's is bigger? Not let's that. not go there. <laughs> <laughs> See, is that? So Jason's got his auto sleeper, I've got the auto trail. So the auto trail and the auto sleeper, they all came out around the same sort of time doing the, the tracker or the Broadway, which is a little bit of a longer version of the Nuevo. But this was on the Fiat Scudo before. Not many people probably realised that. And then it turned on to the Fiat Ducato around 2002. You can see it does have the, the old headlights on, um, but lovely low mileage. It is a two berth, so let's go and have a look inside. OK, so now we're inside this horse trail tracker. You can see why it is a two berth. On the right hand side, we do have a longer bench seat. And on the left hand side, we do have a shorter bench seat for me. It ain't the best layout because you just want those two bench seats. But as you get to the Broadway, as Jason showed you earlier, you get two longer singles, which makes it much better. But this does turn into a double bed. OK, so the kitchen area itself, we have lots of workspace. This does cover the sink where we have hot and cold water. We've got lots of workspace going down to here where we do also have electrics, lots of drawers and storage all around. Because it's UK spec, as we keep going on about, it does have the full oven and grill with some hob burners just underneath and a load of wardrobe space on this side. Plenty of space in the bathroom. You've got the sink with the shower that comes out on the left and the toilet, which actually has quite a lot of, uh, of leg space, to be fair, for a, a vehicle of this size. Now we're in the cab, you can see that nice analog odometer, which shows you that it is the old cab, the best way of telling when they came out around 2002. So 2,800 kilograms, which means anybody can drive it. It is a nice little two berth motorhome. It is on the Fiat Ducato, two litre, turbo diesel engine so it's not it's got plenty of poke for something this size let's go and have a look at the tribute f62 and we've got the f62 coming up in a bit Ooh, 
Ooh, I like that film. Oh, Ooh, I did like that one. Um, upholstery showed its age, isn't it? It is. Uh, yeah, the, the, the design is, but it's actually bloody... Okay, so your, yours was a 2012, and it had done how many miles? 18. 18. 18, yeah. This is a 2002, so another 10 years older, and it had done 31,000. That's nothing, is it? No. So, like, I mean, I know it's I know it's age in the upholstery, but that is pretty spot on, to be honest. That's what's cool, that's... That, that single seat there. Yeah, you just want the two bench seats, don't you? But it yeah. is at 5.73 metres, which is, I think, where you lose. But just you've get got to quite the a... back of it, mate. You've got quite a long kitchen. That's a great prep area, you know. Yeah. I think if there's only two... Having said that, I think if there's only two of you, I think I'd prefer to have the kitchen space and being mm. a cook. Oh, you don't, you don't want to go on holiday to cook, though, do you? You'd rather be out, like, barbecuing, and you don't want to be stuck inside cooking. I love cooking, John. Uh, Mark, oh, I love cooking. Uh, Me and Jason I, were talking I, about steaks the other day. We were comparing notes on how to cook a steak. On the barbecue, perfect. Not in not in the caravan or motor home. You don't want to oh, be cooking Oh, no, not inside. in the caravan. Yeah, oh, you see, you don't need that big right? kitchen. Oh, <laughs> this, is, this is a motor home show. Like a Sorry. Show. <laughs> I do like that back end part of it, Shane. That's nice, Ellis. Yeah, there's a lot of pro work. But yeah, nice and bright yeah. for its bright, bright and nice and bright for its age. It is nice and bright for its age. Decals mm. look well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is nice. And yeah, that is the, is the funny thing about this. So we were talking about how motorhome prices have gone up over the years. How much do you reckon that was new 18 years ago? Ooh. Twenty-two nine nine five. How much, Mark? Twenty-two nine nine five. Twenty-eight to thirty k. Mark, you're more in the CI territory. It was twenty-eight uh, nine nine nine, I think, or Stick somewhere around that. Shows what I know, doesn't it? <laughs> and and do you know how much they're on the net for now? Go on. Oh, I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm two thousand two. Yeah. That's, that's that one of yours has got good mileage, 2002 good mile. Uh, I'm going to say 19.995, but they won't be. They'll be 21.995. You're probably closer with the first one just because it's just the last of the old cab. Yeah. But yeah, the new cabs are 22. If you were to buy a 52 play, it would be 22 grand. So if you'd own that from new... And you were pointing up and you got it for 20 grand back for it, you'd lost eight grand over 18 years. No, but if you wanted to, but if you wanted to buy a new tracker, which is why so for the people who aren't in the trade, this is why the prices stay high, is because that was 28 grand when it was new. If you wanted a tracker now, you're paying mid-50s. So for every year the new ones go up, it's hard for the used ones to go down. Because if you want to buy a new one, you they go up. Three grand so getting more and more, aren't they? Which one did we have the conversation about the other day? Was it the Benny Mar or the Bursner? Where a couple of years ago they were 50 grand new and now they're 79. Uh, no, that was an Adria, but yeah, same. Yeah, no, sorry, but that was talking about an Adria, but yes, the Bursners and all that sort of lot, they're going up. They were 55 grand four years ago, but they're now probably 75 grand now. Which means everything that was fifty five grand five four years ago is now fifty five grand now. No, yeah, it's a lot That's of money, isn't it? Still for an old, an old vehicle. No, it's not. It is. You buy a car in a caravan for less than that. <laughs> Mark, I haven't sold it yet. <laughs> oh, brilliant value that is! Fantastic. Such a bargain. We're going to have to do some editing with them, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. I can't come on here and tell lies, can I? <laughs> okay, folks. Um, we hopefully want to start bringing new features in. If there's anything different you want in the show, different things you want to see or anything like that, you can get me on Twitter. On It's a Harry Motor and a new cookie program. No Twitter. I know. Just checking. <laughs> uh, Caravans and Camp is a test y 45 rp I'm also on Instagram at the Motorhome Man, and you can subscribe to me on my YouTube channel, the Motorhome Man. Shane, 
or myself at We Buy a Motor Caravan. Just like that. Can't right. If you've not changed these names yet. We do actually do work guess. of the week, you know. What's going on? It's no excuse. Ten minutes so to set an up. <laughs> Thanks, Shay. That's right. Okay, one of the one of the most questions I get asked a lot about people, especially when people are wild camping, is um, leisure batteries, Shay. Uh, and when I get a lot of motorhomes in with leisure batteries, I do find they are wired up wrong as well. Um, there is, I don't know if people do know this, there is a certain way to wire them up, isn't there? I don't know. I'll come to oh. you for that one. Okay, well, watch this then. <laughs> Somewhere down the line, you might want to put an additional leisure battery onto your vehicle, especially if you do a lot of wild camping. Um, so what we've got here, we've got the existing leisure battery that's on the motorhome, and this is the positive coming from the motorhome onto your existing battery, and there's your negative coming on to your existing battery there. So now you want to put an extra battery onto the motorhome. So what we do, um, you can use different size ledger batteries, but what we tend to do is, for example, this is a 105, we like to put a 105 on as the extra one. We like to keep them the same. And then what we tend to see is the positive going onto the new battery, connected up to the existing battery and then the negative on the new battery connected up to the existing battery so there you've got two batteries linked up no and what you're doing is you're still only using this leisure battery <clears throat> and this battery is not getting used to, at all so what we need to do is we can keep this the same we've got the positive coming in onto the existing battery linked up to the new one and what we need to do is if we take this off the lead from the motor ohm now needs to go to the new battery and then we link up the existing battery to the new battery and now we're getting both uh, batteries working together what we also like to do as well is the two links we like to keep the leads at the same length. So now you've got two leisure batteries working together. Isn't that a nice end screen? Ah. Yeah, I haven't seen them before. Yeah. Are they all, are they, have you got them on all videos or have I just switched off by them? You've probably switched off by them. <laughs> See, we bring you reviews, we bring you tips. We're bringing everything to the table, aren't we? Oh, it's like it's like a better version of Top Gear, where they don't smash the caravans or motor homes up. Shall we get two caravans off or? <laughs> yeah, get that airstream. Airstream See what against the base camp. <laughs> See how long it takes to start crying. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, and anybody wants to, uh, us to do any features or film any features, uh, we're going to try and do different things throughout it, aren't we, uh, Shane? Just a few more reviews, a few more tips, just different yep. things, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So uh, here's, here's, here's one, Jason. Somebody's just uh, commented. Please, can you guys do a bit one week about motor and caravan track alarms? So many vans are stolen and don't stand why people don't secure their big purpose. They're just... We could do. I mean, after after my week this week, it could be quite poignant. So a lot of a lot of as you know, a lot of motorhomes don't come with trackers, do they? No. Or alarms, or alarms. They don't come as standard. They, they're normally an aftermarket fit or a manufactured fit, for whatever reason. But yes, they do get stolen. And it was a new dealer the other day. He uh, he bought a, a Bailey motorhome. It was on his pitch for a day. 2019 Bailey Autograph 79-4. Midnight. Within two minutes, it was gone. Simple as that. No Solid track alarm really? on it. Yeah. yeah. You'd have thought so. You'd have mm. thought so. What about two batteries fitted by manufacturers? I don't get that. 
two I reckon it's two batteries fitted by two different manufacturers. Doesn't really matter, does it? I as long like... as the as long as they're as good as each other. Yeah, no, yeah, if it's a 105, always put a 105 on. If it's a 75, always put a 75 on. How do you go on earth is only doing for one battery? Can we put one battery on? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I started up my van just on leisure batteries the other day. It's a real mess. I have to isolate the engine battery every night. Leisure batteries aren't designed to be started up. Vehicle batteries are designed to give a boof to start a van. A leisure battery is designed to give a constant flow, basically. Right, shall we move on? Mark, storage. You want to talk about storage, caravans? Yep. Hello. Hi, Mark. Got you. Back again. How'd you do? I feel like Matt. I've been on a lot tonight. You trying yeah, to... Yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, right, man. talk to us about storage. So, yeah, um, caravan, motor and storage. Um, there's there's lots of different places that you can store your caravan on motor own, but there's a thing called Kasoa, which is the – have you got their website, Shane? So it's the Caravan Storage Site Owners Association. That's why I needed to put that up so I could read what it was. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they're they're the, the only – accredited um storage sites that there are that are recognized by insurance companies basically so if you're looking to store your caravan or motorhome these are going to be sites that have gone through an assessment um as an independent surveyor has gone out done a a points-based survey basically and then accredited them either bronze silver or gold um depending on what security features that they've got gold obviously is is the highest and bronze is the minimum security that they they want for their sites uh if you aren't up to standard they will basically just go away and say you need to do this 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 and this until you've done that you're not going to be part of our storage site uh, association basically um as a storage site owner, we have to have uh, public liability insurance, but that doesn't cover you if the vehicle gets stolen, damaged. It is literally a public liability um, insurance. So if, if you were to have an accident and it was the owner's fault, if they hadn't done all the things that they should have done, they, they would be liable. But as, as far as theft and damage, you have got to still have a separate insurance um, and again, just because it's a Kosoa accredited site, it doesn't mean that things can happen. It doesn't mean that it won't get stolen or it won't get damaged. It, it does still happen, unfortunately. Um, but what uh, what it does mean, wow, 700, I need to find a site down in Kent by the looks of it. That's a <laughs> lot. That's a oh. lot of dough, it, Mark? yeah yeah so again you will get different prices throughout the country and it's supply and demand again um in the midlands where it's sort of between five and six hundred pound which i thought that that was getting onto the higher limits i, I hadn't seen anybody that wasn't in kosoa at sort of over 600 pounds um and obviously some sites will offer different things so some will offer wash off facilities so if you're looking at storage um it's worth going and having a look. The the mini or the the recommended minimum distance between vehicles is between three and three and a half meters. Um, so your bay that your vehicle should go into should be between three three and a half meters. Some are literally crammed in, and you can't get your your, your vehicle door open, um, which you're asking you're asking for damage if if that's the case. So if you're looking at storage, go and have a look round as a as a site owner you you want people to come and have a look around you're not going to turn around and go oh no we're not going to let you in uh we will let people come and come and have a look at the the site see what the facilities are make sure people are comfortable um but it every site is different and it's difficult to until you've actually been and looked at a site don't don't just go oh that looks good on the internet it looks great it could be a load of pictures from somewhere else to so actually go and visit Visit the storage site that you are going to put put your vehicle in, 
um as say as i've mentioned their prices can vary a lot um but again that that is going to depend on what security features that they've got that could be a non cassava site and have really really good um security features but that probably wouldn't make a difference to your own insurance then um, if you're going to a, a cassava accredited site it should make a difference on your own insurance so uh, it's it's worth worth looking at um our main website is the caravanplace.com um, and then our storage site is the caravan storage site.com i believe i've not been on it for a long time uh, but again we're, we're we're completely full um i know everybody in our local area is completely full and that's then what tends to happen is prices prices go up um there's been a a lot a lot more demand doesn't there so um if if people sort of a lot of the newer properties now and i'll say even new probably 20 year old you look in the deeds of a lot of the properties and they'll say that you can't keep a motor home or caravan on the drive a lot of people that can keep the caravans or motorhomes on the drive say well actually why am i going to put it on the drive when i go away everyone knows i've gone gone on holiday and the house is empty possibly um so it's it's down to personal preference but a lot of people like like to do the storage um but uh yeah that's that's another good good thing a lot of people ask for the gas bottles to be turned off or removed um a lot of the sites are rural so again you can get issues with mice so that's with the rodent control that's something that you need to look at but um, just just make sure that you actually go and have a good look through ask questions on the Kosoa website which i think is kosoa.co.uk um that that will have frequently asked questions and a good little list of things that you can go and sort of be prepared to ask they've got on their website that you can type in your postcode you can find out what different sites are what the security standards are we've got gold and for us to become gold we literally needed to have cctv coverage alarmed uh, we ended up putting a an automatic bollard in for so we we only operate between business hours so nine to five some are 24 hour access and again it puts people off where they go oh well i'm going to be at work till five o'clock i don't really want to come out of work to be able to try and pick the caravan up so access times is a a, a big thing that puts people off maybe with us but we're full so we must be doing something right or whether it's just that literally the area is in high demand that we uh they can't go anywhere else so they've had to come with us but we've we've probably had a waiting list for two or three years so uh and it's it's the phone still hasn't stopped now obviously it's, it's just been worse with messages phone uh, and like i mentioned now i've not actually looked at our own Kosoa website or our storage website for 12 months just because i've i've just not needed to um we've just got far far more demand than, than what we can cope with we're actually looking for sites to to do more storage on but we just can't find anywhere so uh, can't have had storage we're in the wrong business shape i know yeah if you've got the right piece of land in the right place that's that's the key yeah it's you look at a lot of the the land to put the and this is this is probably what ends up putting the costs up is that different parts of land throughout the country will be rated at different levels it will cost more money and that then is going to determine the price uh, as i say round us it's sort of five to six hundred pounds a year but trying to find some land to actually keep enough vehicles on that will cover that that cost is really difficult without going into sort of seven eight hundred pound and then you've just you just priced yourself out the market um so the demand might be there but if everyone else is turning around and saying oh it's five to six hundred pounds a year to then turn around and say oh well yeah we've we've got a space but it's eight hundred pound um you might fill it short term but long term it's, it's probably not the best best option this is not a bad subject to, to discuss another time don't you think 
Not at all, no. It's uh, no. I never realised they've got the, how much storage was now. Yeah, it's. it's I'm probably still lot. back in the day. I'm probably still back in the day where the two to three hundred pound a year. Yeah, when they went and um, Mark said, "Oh, we'll have a touch on storage." I went, "Yeah, okay." Expect to be a five minute thing, and we can get a lot deeper on this, can't we? There's there's a lot to it, to be fair, and then there's a lot where. Um, because obviously people, especially during lockdown with motor homes, the batteries going flat and whatever, and there's not, not been an awful lot people could do about that. But there's a big maintenance side as well for your caravan or your motor home, keeping an eye on it, what you should be doing while it's in storage, keeping an eye on it and whatever. So there's possibly a good side of it there for, for Lee to take on. Yeah, we'll go over that. I think, um, yeah, make a note of that, Shay. I think that's a good conversation we can have on storage and everything else. Uh are you going to show the F62? My favourite little two beers ever in the world wide world. I think I'm going to get a bit upset watching this actually. Okay. I miss doing the shows. <laughs> I can't find it. There it is. <laughs> now, as far as the compact van goes, this is one of my favourite <laughs> compact vans, little two berths. It's an all-cell tribute F62, and it's on a Ford chassis. And this one in particular is on the 130 brake horsepower, three and a half tons, so it can be driven on the restricted car license. It is a full berth with two belts, so it has the bench seats inside. Yeah, what I like about this van. It's got a great little kitchen area here, and we've got good toilet, good washroom. And what they've also packed in. Come and see for yourself all the drop down bed, which is electric, and then also get your bench seats here as well. These can be made up into a double bed as well. You've also got a good single here, I'd say, yeah? That's a, it is a good single. I mean, you can easily fit four, five people around there. I mean, does it, I don't know whether the driver and passenger seats swivel around or not. But look at that big screen on the Ford as well. I'm assuming that's one of the packs, but that's brilliant. Yeah. It's a great little two berth van. Yeah. Anything personally I don't like about it is it's on the whale heater, but at the same time it is an electric bed, so it does go up and down without any effort. And it's just under six meters long as well, which is a great size. <laughs> yeah, I know. The only thing I'm a bit unsure of, bit of a waste of space in the corner there now if you're actually chopping stuff you've got to be leaning over the i get your point i get your point i think i'd rather Probably have the sink you could there. have put a microwave there yeah, well, the, where's, oh, your, yeah, where's or, your workspace or, or moved it yeah you moved just, it you over just got, you just got no workspace i feel yeah. like the sink could have been better there somehow with a bit of workspace in the middle okay okay i'll give you that give I'll, you yeah. slim line fridge yeah again Free, freezer compartment at the top. I'm assuming this is for the table. Free standing table. And what do we have? Well, three hobs on there as well, isn't that nice? Everything you need. It's a great van. I do like how they are, they are coming up on the Ford. Well. Yeah, and on the Fords. The Fords are getting better and better every year now. Yeah. And I know Chasson for sure they use the Ford now as their top, uh, their range topper. Great little two berth camper van. You know, it's quite wide as well. I'm surprised about how wide it is. It's almost into Bailey territory for space. And I can't work out why. Yeah, that is it's shit. When I came into the van. I mean, for me to sit down and stretch my legs out and I'm not sitting the other side. Well, this is it. When I came into the van, the first thing I found, it, it, I've got good vibes from it. It felt homely. It's just good vibes. Yeah. Yeah, nice and spacious. Nice one. Yep. I enjoy the shows. I do. I miss them. It's going to be a long time, you know I think, what? until we go back as well. I, That's the sad thing. And it's when I, I like a van, and then I swung you around onto that van. Because <laughs> you didn't like that van at first, did you? No, I didn't know. And you remember the other week, I was really upset when I saw some, saw somebody trying to sell one to me. But well, they put the wrong model down. <laughs> I remember that, yeah. <laughs> it was an old trailer Marler instead. I was like, bloody hell. But that's the fun we can have there, mate, isn't it? It's like when we're talking about um, where the sink should be and things like that. 
I know. Yeah, I, 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 I still well, we are going to have got Lee Lottie, 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 Lottie. <laughs> Yeah. It's funny, isn't that... it, that your, your first mouse you? room, I am sorry, your first mouse room, there's not a huge difference in the layout, is there? The layout over the last 20 years hasn't significantly changed, has it, for that, that the two mouse rooms that you've put on there? There ain't an awful lot you could do, mate. What what the difference is is now is the drop down bed. Yeah. No, I meant um, on on Shane's one, the one that Shane did with the because the kitchen was pretty much the not exactly the same, but it was similar. That's a good point, mate. Yeah. 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 Now, yeah, tw twenty odd years, and they've have not hugely changed it, have they? No, they just made them lighter. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a good point. Because like I said, that, that that's is a great logic. point, Mark. It's it's a, it's obviously a good layout that has tested the time, hasn't it? Yeah. It's uh and uh, I was saying about sort of you don't need a kitchen like that, but obviously there's there's demand for it for it to still be it, it's not changed significantly, has it? So there's there's still a good demand for that layout by the yeah. looks of it. That's a great point, you know. Good good point, yeah. Uh, I tell you, do you know what is interesting as well, Shane, is what I'm starting to like about these little features is the older vans and looking at the newer vans and then the new vans. And like you say, you can see the progression, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. So, but they're still, it, yeah. But they're still not quite getting it right with some bits. I still can't work out why they never put that sink in the corner. Good point. Who thought it? Ah, there we go. Good point. Go. Right. Let's go see what Elf Coombs like. Campsite. John's Jones. Let's go. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on holiday. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> oh, I love being away. I love it. Introducing Tango Man, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Sun's so, good, then. Cool, Sun's been lovely. Yeah. Yeah, it's been good. No, it's a good week. Um, so we set off early doors Tuesday morning. Um, nice little rundown. Um, so we've uh, so we were M4 uh, Swindon Way down to Bristol. Bristol was fine. Start traffic started picking up as we got to around Bridgewater. They got Roadwalks M5 South. Um, but yeah, no, made good time getting across the the link road to Barnstable and then Barnstable up and in. So we've not been to this site before. So we booked this um, during lockdown. Uh, well, that's a, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> Get, twiddle your knob, Dan. <laughs> yeah, Dan from the Trojans. Hang on, hang on. Need to adjust this, the colour on my monitor. <laughs> I should have changed my T-shirt, really, shouldn't I? A bit orangey, I suppose. But hey, we're on holiday. Don't matter. Even got my holiday band on <laughs> um where was i so yeah no we've not been to this site before and booked it during um lockdown um with the 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 intention of not being able to have uh the use of uh any hello martin uh any facilities so ilfacoom uh caravan and motorhome club site has no facilities other than service points so for since tuesday we've been using the facilities in the van and fine it's a family of four of us and a dog and um we have coped really really well now i know everybody is now in the same boats or, or there are um certain restrictions on i don't know if you can hear all the dogs barking in the background something's going on sorry <laughs> um with the restrictions in place at the moment where a lot of sites either having um the the shower blocks and toilet blocks closed or they're putting the numbers in and out and we would always book sites with facilities and we would use them we, okay yes we've got them in the caravan but we haven't used them full time all the time until now and i gotta be honest it's fine it's not a problem at all it's worked really really well and um, we're having we're i'm emptying the, the the cassette every day just in case so after i finish with you guys i'm going to do my uh, my my shameful walk to the to the uh, to the point and uh, empty it out in preparation for this evening um but guys it's it's if you've got your you've got facilities in your in your motorhome you've got facilities in in your caravans um i, I 
I wouldn't be a sh shame to use them and don't you don't not use them. Um, that's what they're there for. We've all of us have had showers. I've had two showers in a day after we've been back from the beach. The kids have been in there. Not a problem at all. Not a problem yeah, the, at all. Yeah, the only the only problem is, is like you said, it's just having to keep going to empty stuff out. Yeah, or, yeah. or fill up or. I think yeah. with what, what we've done, we only have one, uh, normally only have one aqua roll. Um, and I've borrowed a second one uh, from a friend for this trip, um, thinking we're going to use a little bit more water with, uh, with the showers. And um, we haven't used a great deal more than what we would. We, we've planned to when I have a shower, I'll generally have a shower in the morning. Sarah and the kids will generally have one in the afternoon once we're back from what we've been doing. And it's not it's not a hardship it's everybody on site is lovely They're, as as you get at every site we all go to um somebody was having a bit of a party last night uh john have you got no we don't have a water tank on board um so we only have our true mojito and the aqua roll so Caravans we don't, have... don't do they generally i think some i know some do um but right. ours doesn't um so yeah um but I've, I've done a, a plug out for my channel again. Uh, um, I've done a video on how long a, uh, you can shower in your caravan. And uh, it's, it's approximately six minutes full whack um, that you can get in, have it on full whack, shower. And yeah, six minutes is about the, the, the amount of time for if you're having it on full. But the top tip is turn it on, get yourself wet, turn it off. Do your washy uppy bits um, and rinse it off. Get out. Have you so, done a video for us today, John? I have indeed. So just in case uh, this connection didn't work, so I wasn't quite sure how it was going to work actually being in a field in North Devon with nothing around us. Um, I, I did a video on uh, Ilfacoon uh, Caravan and Motorhome Club site just in case. But um, yeah, let's have, let's have a look. So uh, Shane, a run VT. <laughs> This is the dog walk at Ilfacombe Caravan and Motor Home Club site. Good size. Yes, this is the uh, site. There's more down over that side. There's a non dog area play area there, and dog walking areas over there where you saw me this morning. This is a bit of a, a, an advanced warning if you're traveling to Ilfacoon Caravan and Motorhome Club site. So yesterday we turned up with our caravan on the back and our sat-nav, even in truck mode, <laughs> sent me uh, down this road. Now I'm gonna show you this road, but do not go down this road. Carry on up the A361 to a roundabout. Where I'm gonna show you now, do not go down. What you'll see as you're coming up the A361, there's a sign, uh, let's see if it zoom in. There's a sign for a cafe. What I'll do is I'll drive down the road. So you'd be coming in from Braunton on the A361, and this is where you're gonna be seeing. So just before this garage, it's called Listers. Now my sat-nav is a truck sat-nav, and it's set for the caravan. Um, now I should have heeded the warnings. So on that sign over there, it says unsuitable for heavy goods and wide vehicles. I thought my truck sat nav was gonna be okay. So first of all, it's really steep. <laughs> and it was 
quite steep getting up here with the caravan. And it's, as you can see, it's single track. A mic, and it's really tight. So do not come up this road. Carry on past the garage and you'll head up to a roundabout. Man, honestly. I quite enjoyed that, John. <clears throat> no, I like, yeah, but oh, I, that, I shouldn't have followed. I, my sat-nav, I've had it for years, and it's it's a cheapy one off of, uh, off of eBay, but until Tuesday, it had never, ever, ever let me down. And I, there's there's more to that video that actually shows you coming into the the um, West Down, which is the little village, which is just down the road. And I am not the first one because I when I when we arrived here, I spoke to the wardens and I said, "Oh, gee, my sat nav took me in down there." They're like, "You're not the first, and you won't be the last." Um, it is so so tight. So um, yeah, it basically what you what you should do is follow the A three six one or the, the is it A three six one the main road going all the way up. You'll come to a roundabout. There's a pub um, and restaurant called the Depot. Um, hang a right at that one and then come into the north side from the sort of the north end of the campsite. It's still single track road down into here, but it doesn't take you through the little village that is West Down. It was, yeah, a massive fail for me, which, yeah, I was uh, gone. Oh, I was going to say, I was not. Uh, we're here for 10 days. Um, yeah, I was going to say, which one's talking? <laughs> there, was some, there, was some cracking, there was some cracking comments came in when, when that was Yeah, I was, I was seeing some of them coming in. <laughs> uh, just... Go on. Oh, that's just fine. fine. Oh, it's, 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 well, you're fine to that. I think that is, a, I, I know that the, the site is five mile an hour. <laughs> I, it was, it was speeded up, Dan. You know how the magic of editing works. <laughs> is John on a uh, bike doing this vid? Yes. Yeah. So I had uh, my little GoPro type camera uh, on my bike. Uh, no, I'm not at the uh, Leo Lorry, Laura Leo, Leo Lorry. I'm not at the F1, unfortunately. <laughs> Lisa Infill as well. Thanks, John. You said dog walk. My dog just looked at me. I, I dog won't walk, not I'm walk, not... dog walk, walkies, walkies. I won't say walkies. <laughs> How many dogs will start barking? Hang on, Jax has just started moving in there. <laughs> he hates walks anyway. Um, yeah, no, it's it's like I say, it's it's a lovely it's busy. It is really busy. And talking to the wardens, they have never had it this busy, um, even through the summer months. And he, he said it just sort of shows the uh, the climate that we're in, whether or not that's new um, people uh, that are into caravanning and motorhoming and or that it's staycation, that people are staying in the UK. He, it's honestly, there are there are literally one or two pitches free. Um, just looking out behind me, there's, there's people setting up now. They're, they're putting the awnings up. And so that's that's people turning up on a Sunday evening. Um, yeah, I think it's what's also also happened as well is with uh, people going abroad now as well. They've also got to go in isolation again. Mm. That's also yeah. So, something um something Mark brought up earlier. I just let him explain this about when he come when you come back from uh, a foreign country. He's back yet. So yeah, uh, they've now from what I saw earlier government announcement is that you've got to register 48 if you've been abroad doesn't matter where you've been you've got to register on their website 48 hours before returning um with where you've been where you are where you're coming back to and that is regardless of whether you've got to isolate or not if you've been to spain or wherever um so they're obviously thinking truck mm. and trace sort of a thing but also um they're obviously looking into it a bit more and it seems as though there might be a possibility that there might be more restrictions put in um to different different european countries and further afield I mean, so i mean if you if you think about it if you're on a plane with 200 people however many people on the plane you only have to get one that's got a bit of a sniffly nose or something like that that then yeah. has to go and get tested and all of a sudden that's everyone much, then yeah you'd probably say that's the whole plane then wouldn't you 
Yeah. yeah. I'm not even sure if it would even be... I wonder how they sanitise the planes in, in between each route. You know, will it then I be the next day maybe? No, I think they defog everything. But again, it's still... If someone's on there coughing and spreading it around the walk to the toilet and they've coughed on the rands and... I don't know. It's the same, I suppose, everywhere. But but have, had you had you seen that anywhere else about the the forty eight? Now there's a hundred pound right. fine if you don't do that. It was literally that I'd just come across it by accident. But it's not been well publicised again to sort of say this is what you've got to do if you're going abroad, regardless of where you're going. You've got to register on the government website forty eight hours before you come back, or you're going to get a hundred pound fine. I've not seen. I, I, I did see it, but it's not been a hugely <laughs> publicised thing. So it's again, why aren't they putting this out mainstream? Oh, Mark, Mark, is this a new thing? Is this just something that's happened in the last couple of days, or uh, probably the last day or so, John? Hmm. Yeah, last day. Or so. <laughs> Do you like how I did that? Yeah, you like that? We should. We I should couldn't get it you. right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can see them putting that all in up now. <laughs> can you see them? Yeah, they're doing a yeah. good job. <laughs> well, let's, let's 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 not get negative about it, okay? Because, well, like I say, yeah, um, we managed to get away on the staycations and everything. We're not really bothered about going abroad. We want to be in a motorhomes and in the caravans, basically. Um, I think we give everybody everything tonight, haven't we? We give um, a motorhome reviews, some caravan reviews, good subjects. I think we're going to touch on in the future with storage. Enjoyed that. Um, we get to see Ilfa Coon at four hundred miles an hour. <laughs> if there's anything anybody wants to see please get in touch with us um and we're just trying to make this format as best as we can what we deal shane yep yeah, yeah i've enjoyed that tonight really yeah. it's nice to have a break in between with the videos yeah i can blow my nose <laughs> yeah so hopefully we'll see you all next week with more reviews more campsites um tips tricks and everything else everybody take care See you soon. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.